What is up, Sopranos fans? Kino here, and I am back with another Soprano log. Today we're looking at the fourth episode of the fifth season, All Happy Families. Now this title is a reference to the famous uh, Leo Tolstoy line, All Happy Families are alike, but each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Now this line has a couple of meanings in this episode. The first is the unhappiness uh, within the New York family. Now, Lorraine Caluso is murdered by uh, Billy Leotardo uh, because she refused to pay up to Johnny Sack. Little Carmine is greatly upset when he hears this but because, of course, uh, she was a friend of his and they had a relationship in the past. And this is the first time we're introduced to Rusty Milio, who is the main capo uh, supporting Carmine. Um, and he's also played by Frankie Valli, who is funny enough uh, referenced on his own throughout The Sopranos. But we get the sense here that little Carmine is being manipulated by Rusty. And the whole scene um, is an homage to George W. Bush. I forgot to mention this in my little Carmine video. Um, but little Carmine is kind of a play on George W. Bush. You know, this idiot who, you know, inherits this empire of his from his father. Um, and he's being manipulated by, you know, in this case, Rusty Milio. You know, just like George W. Bush was thought to be kind of manipulated by uh, Dick Cheney. Uh, so it's kind of a play on the politics of the era, which was, of course, happening during the run of The Sopranos. Uh, but meanwhile, Carmela and Tony are called to AJ's school to discuss uh, his grades with his uh, guidance counselor, Robert Wegler. The counselor says that AJ really needs to get his grades up if he has a hope of getting into a good college. And Carmela wants to, you know, ride AJ more, make him, you know, study harder, and just not let him goof around like he's been doing. But Tony really undermines this. He buys AJ a new car. He says it's a motivational tool. But of course, Tony does this. He buys his children things, spoils them, and really just undermines their work ethic all the time. AJ really starts to uh, resent Carmela for, you know, always being on his case and not being fun like Tony. Um, and he's really disrespectful to her, uh, talks back to her, and she's just at her wit's end with him. In an effort to get him to like her more, uh, she agrees to let him go to a concert in New York, which she was originally against, but against her better judgment, she agrees to let him go on the one condition that he goes to Meadow's apartment afterwards instead of spending the night at the hotel with his friends. He agrees, but on the night of, he instead goes to the hotel with his friends and gets Meadow to cover for him with Carmela. They drink at the hotel, they smoke pot, uh, they get really wild, and they end up pulling a bunch of pranks on each other, like drawing on each other's face. AJ's eyebrows get shaved, um, and he wakes up really late the next day with his face even super glued to the floor, which is pretty funny. Carmela freaks out when he doesn't show up at the house. She thinks something might have happened to him. Um, and when he does finally return home, she's furious that he lied to her. When Tony comes over, you know, she's had enough with AJ, and she finally says, you know, just take him. Uh, to live with you because I can't stand living with him anymore. AJ, of course, is very happy about this because, again, Tony is not a disciplinarian, and so he's happy about this whole arrangement that he gets to live with his father now. Uh, meanwhile, the guys are out at Adriana's club, and there's a funny little detail where Silvio nods uh, when he hears a song in the background, um, and it kind of stands out of place, but it's actually a kind of a meta joke uh, about the fact that it's a Springsteen song. And Silvio's actor, uh, little Steven Van Zant, uh, played in Springsteen's band. So kind of a meta joke there. Uh, but Feet shows up um, and he starts ordering people around. Um, you know, it's very disrespectful that he asks everyone to leave instead of asking Tony if he can, you know, talk to him one on one. We see that Feet has a real attitude problem um, and he thinks that his age and experience um, gives him all this seniority and power. Uh, but he asks Tony if he can run the executive card game. He says that he has it coming to him, especially since Tony's rise to power came from the fact that he hit Feature's card game and disrespected him like that. Um, so Tony agrees to, you know, let him run the card game and get a percentage of the earnings. Um, but he's starting to be worried about Feature's attitude. He's worried that, you know, as an old timer, he's not going to respect Tony, just like Richie April in the second season. After the card game, Feach hijacks some cars from this wedding. Um, it's actually the wedding of Dr. Ira Freed's daughter. Um, he learned about this at the card game, and he decided to use it as an opportunity to steal all these you know, expensive cars from this family. 
Ira is very upset by this. He goes to Tony and asks for his help in getting the cars back. And Tony's really infuriated that Feech would do this behind his back and he would disrespect a friend of his like that. All this just cements in his mind that Feech is not going to play along with him being the boss. You know, Feech apologizes and he says that, you know, he'll learn that Tony is the boss. Uh, But Tony's unconvinced, especially when he remembers the fact that he's the only one who didn't laugh at his stupid joke at the card game. Everyone else was afraid of Tony and was kissing his ass by laughing at his dumb joke, uh, but Feech didn't. And that cements in his mind that uh, Feech will never respect him as the boss. So he decides to get rid of Feech, but he doesn't want to kill him because Feech is a well-respected guy. He's got this legend behind him. So instead, he arranges for Christopher to set Feech up. They go over to his house um, and they let him basically hold on to some stolen goods for them. And then later Feech's parole officer shows up and Feech gets sent back to prison. And in the very last scene, we see that uh, Feech is looking out the window, very forlorn, realizing that he's going to die in prison. He's very old at this point. He's not going to survive. And in many ways, this was crueler than having him killed. He has to live the rest of his life in prison, uh, which is very sad. Uh, But meanwhile, Wegler invites Carmella out to lunch. Um, It's to discuss AJ's grades and his strategy for getting him into a good college. But when they're at lunch, they start to connect. And, you know, she tells him about her life. And he suggests that she read the novel uh, Madame Bovary. He says that, you know, the character parallels Carmella in many ways. And she agrees to read it. But it's clear from their conversation that she's out of her depth intellectually. There's this funny part where... You know, she's writing down the the name of the book and the author and she looks up and you can see her for a second almost ask him, you know, how to spell the name because it's a French author. Uh, But she decides not to because she feels stupid. But it's clear that even though there's this, you know, attraction between the two of them, he is just so much intellectually above Carmela. And we'll see where that ends up um, in the following episodes. Uh, But Carmela returns home to an empty house And, you know, she realizes that she's pushed away everyone, uh, you know, Tony, AJ now, and she lives all by herself. Even though she's ostensibly getting what she wants, getting Tony out of her life and now AJ, she really doesn't have anything besides the family. So we'll see where that goes in future episodes. But thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for the next Soprano Log coming soon. Special thank you to all my patrons for getting me a new car as a motivational tool to make these videos. Hunter, Tommy Smith, Abdallah Alamari, George Jones, Russell, Sean, Graham, Rooftop, Rico Bellic, Part of Markness, Broccoli, Isaiah, Placenta Juan, Logan, and Cleve. 